by Ronnie Jukes. This is your life. Your late parents were professional entertainers, and you were born their only child at 98 Eastwood Lane, Rotherham, Yorkshire. As a child, you showed such natural dancing talent that, in fact, you trained as a ballet dancer. And in those days, it seemed you were a potential rival to the likes of Nuria. What went wrong? I didn't grow anymore. <laughs> Well, at, at the age of 12, you're the star pupil of the Parkgate School of Dancing in Rotherham, and here you are with all the medals you'd won for dancing. But I think he was chasing medals for football as well as for dancing. Your dancing teacher of more than 30 years ago, Kathy Wright, now Mrs. Willie. <laughs> and with her, the lady who used to dress and make you up for your very first professional shows. For you, she was always Auntie Nellie, Mrs. Nellie Macon. <laughs> Kathy, tell me, how did you find out you're a ballet dancing footballer in the school? Well, Eamon, I didn't know for quite a while, but uh, until one period he kept uh, coming late for private lessons. On the way to dancing school, he had to walk past um, recreation ground, and Ronnie couldn't resist a game of football, so he stayed playing football. Ten minutes late, I'd be walking about in the studio, and uh, I used to think he's late again, he's late again. He'd come flying in, red face, muddy shoes, <laughs> all skew with, tie under, round his ear, and I'd say, you're late again, Ronnie. He'd say, yes, Miss Wright, but please don't tell me, Mother, will you, and I'll work so hard. <laughs> and he did. And Nellie, to keep the children quiet backstage, you used to let them make you up sometimes, uh, yes, didn't I you? Yes, I did. Amen. And... Tell them about the jokes, right? <laughs> 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 you could check that back. <laughs> and he used... You know used the old players now. <laughs> What were you going to tell us about? Ron, he, this night, he, to pass his time, I said, well, you'll make me up, Ronnie. And I sat there, you know, like a, you know, like somebody out of Christmas. <laughs> and he made my face up. And when I looked in the mirror, it put me such a big red nose on, I couldn't get it off for days. <laughs> it was just like Rudolph the Red Nose right there. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly Macon and Kathy Willey. Well, I know what admiration Ronnie you have for both of them and how much you owe Cathy and her teaching. But as a boy dancer, you travel to competitions all over the north of England and we have a telegram here that's sent to you by Cathy to a dance festival in Huddersfield on the 22nd of January of July 1942 and it ends, try hard in the duets. Well, you must have tried very hard because you won six medals that day and two of them were four duets with this young lady. But later, this time in Barnsley, there was another competition you entered with her that looked as though it would end rather differently. It certainly did, with Ronnie and me in tears. You haven't seen her for more than 25 years, that same dancing partner, Rita Thompson, now Rita Hudson. Oh. <laughs> Rita, tell me, what was it that uh, brought on the tears? Well, we, we'd entered for this uh, dance competition at the festival, hadn't we? Do you remember? And uh, it, the song being, Ma, He's Making Eyes at You, which we did beautifully. And then we went into the dance routine. And for some unknown reason, we just got thrown out of step. We didn't know what to do next. He looked at me and I looked at him and we looked at the pianist, which was my mother that played for the dance in school. Another mother. Yeah. And uh, signaled to say, well, carry on. You know, so we did. We just carried on doing anything at living i was following him and he was following me you know but anyway we managed to finish the dance didn't we ronnie yeah. went off stage and think oh we'll have to find a corner you know to creep in out the way of everybody and i thought well well we might as well go home because you know we hadn't won anything uh but it's a good job we didn't Why? because we found the adjudicators had awarded us the first medal so we did quite what you meant it all on purpose yeah. thank you Rita Hudson. <laughs> Well, it's with the Kathy Wright talented juveniles you're tipped by the local newspaper as a budding Fred Astaire dancing his way to fame.
you like to do those Hollywood style numbers, tap dancing up and down an impressive flight of stairs. And the stairs you choose are inside the local public library and your audience is a school pal. Ronnie danced down the stairs, but I was the one that got thrown down them. He was at St. Anne's School's Rotherham with you. Today, a musician, you haven't seen him for 18 years, Roy Bakewell. <laughs> So, Roy, tell us what happened at the library. Well, let's see. We used to frequent the library quite often, Ron, didn't we? <laughs> well, this particular morning, there were five of us, and uh, we'd been chased out several times by a certain gentleman who we nicknamed Boris after Karloff. <laughs> now, this particular morning, Ronnie was with the lads. We were coming out, and one of the kids says, Ronnie, do you think you could dance down the stairs? Uh, and Ronnie says, watch this. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> well, he started. He got three steps down, the lads were singing to give him background effect. <laughs> when all of a sudden, wham, somebody grabbed me at the scuff of the neck, the seat of my pants, and I'm lifted body high. <laughs> Ronnie gets the message to the lads, and he was off like Speedy Gonzales, straight down that road. <laughs> Through the swing doors and down the street, straight down Nottingham Street. <laughs> By the time I hit the pavement, Ronnie was half a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roy Baker. <laughs> Well, you leave school at 14 and go straight onto the professional stage with a touring act called the Dead End Kids. One day at the Hippodrome Theatre, Accrington, you rush into the dressing room with an urgent message from the manager for the newest young member of the act. That was me, and I gave him some very black looks. He's one half of that famous comedy song and dance team, the Patton Brothers, Jimmy, and with him his brother, also an ex-Dead End Kid, Brian Patton. <laughs> Jimmy, why, why did you give Ronnie some black looks? Well, it was my first night in the business, and I was only 15, and I was backstage at Hippodrome Accrington, all excited there in the dressing room with the lads. Got the little makeup box there, and I'm just getting ready for the show, and Ronnie said, hasn't the boss told you? I said, what? He said, well, he wants a bit different, so he wants a little coloured boy for the act. I said, well, I've only got a stick of two and a half here. <laughs> oh, he said, Dump, here, stick of black grease paint. So I get this black stuff and I'm lobbing it on up in the hair, all around my ears, under the neck, black as the ace of spades. Looks like you've fallen off a jar of marmalade. <laughs> I did, I did, yeah. And just before the show started, the boss walks in, Franklin Gray. Well, my face was black, but his turned purple. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, well Ronnie said, I've got a black up. He said, get it off. <laughs> of course, all the lads are falling about. It was just one of Ronnie's practical jokes. It <laughs> was. <laughs> 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 Mind you, you had reason to thank him later, didn't you, Jimmy? I did, yeah. Well, I mean, I just did a little comedy song and a few gags, and I couldn't really dance. But, I mean, Ronnie's a great dancer, and he taught me wings, trenches, cutaways, <laughs> the, the lot. Thanks, Ronnie. It was great. And thank you, Jimmy and